Welcome to episode three of Think Deeper from Focus Press. I'm your host, Jack Wilkie. This month, once again, I was joined by Dr. Brad Harib as we took a, a deeper look into the November 2018 issue of Think Magazine on the topic of Church Between the Sundays. Stay tuned. All right, welcome into episode of uh, episode three of Think Deeper on Focus Press. I'm joined here by Dr. Brad Harrow once again. It's good to be back, Jack. All right, well, we're uh, going to be doing this time a, an episode on our newest issue of Think coming uh, in November. We're calling it Church Between the Sundays. Um, we always talk about we don't go to church, we are the church. Well, what that means is being the church from the time the doors close and we go home to the time we come back the next Sunday. And, and what it means to be a Christian and, and be the church together uh, from Sunday night to Saturday night uh, and all the time in between. Absolutely. This is this is one that Jack took the, the lead in. Uh, getting the authors together, getting everything, share with everybody a little bit about, you know, maybe a, a title or two or at least a, an article or two concept behind this particular issue. What what can they expect? Uh, yeah, we've got a, a really great lineup of writers this time. Uh, we had Edwin Jones, one of our editors, contribute uh, an article on disciple making and, and really what that looks like in practical terms. Um, my wife, Allison Wilkie, uh, great job she did on uh, an article on house hospitality. Shout out you know, to Allison. Shout out yeah. to Allison. That's right. Hey, Glory. Uh, that's right. Glory as well. Little peanut. <laughs> um, and so there, she did a great job writing one on hospitality, opening up our homes to each other and what all we can accomplish uh, with that. Uh, we've got articles on prayer, on service, on, on Bible study. Uh, I'm writing one that we'll give you a preview of on, on focuspress.org here in a couple days on community, on just the importance and how Christianity is essentially uh, built around community, uh, of spending time together, of having people in our lives. Because I was just telling people when I was speaking on this this weekend, one of the most frustrating things about church, one thing I think we would all say we've been through and just feels worthless is that conversation of passing somebody by in the church building. How are you doing? Good. Fine. Good. How are you? Good. I'm fine. We go home and maybe your marriage is struggling. Maybe you're really struggling with a temptation. Maybe your faith is weak. Maybe you're just under a lot of stress and you're not fine. Well, that's really a big part of what we're going to look at in this issue of Think. Uh, what we're going to talk about a bit today is it, how to be Christian between the Sundays. It's It's gotten so bad, Jack, that Nowadays, when people ask how you're doing, they don't even slow down. Right, right. So you'll pass them in the hallway, you know, how you doing? And they may be five steps past you because if you, if you actually stopped and said, well, you know, I'm, I'm really not doing all that well right now. Mm -hmm. It would probably be a pretty big ordeal mm -hmm. of, whoa, I, you know, I, I just expected you to say fine and let's go to Bible class kind of thing. So Yeah. yeah there was a story about some uh, one of the presidents and he was in this long receiving line. People were coming by shaking and, and smiling and shaking and smiling. And he finally got so bored with it and said something crazy like, you know, well, how are you? And he would say, I murdered my mother-in-law last night. You know, just totally making random things up. And people would go, that's, that's great. great yeah. <laughs> and that's that's really what it feels like. And so that idea of community, of committing to each other, building relationships with our church family, uh, that helps us get outside the doors of the church building. And so, as always with the podcast, we're kind of looking at different angles. And, and so the magazine itself, make sure you're a subscriber, um, focuspress.org. As we've said before, 250 a month. Absolutely. Um, uh, you'll, you'll get all these articles, and then, of course, the podcast is always going to be free, and so it's a uh, companion. They kind of go hand in hand. Let's talk about what it means to be the church. So, uh, you know, a lot of times people talk about the church. They think full walls. They think a building. You, know, you hear the people say, we're, we're going to church. Children are oftentimes taught the idea that that building is church, and yet the reality is the church ought to be able to function with or without a building, mm -hmm. with or without those four walls. What, right. what, what does it mean to be the church? I think the other thing is it's either the building or the events because you say we're going to church and you mean the building or I can't, I have church. Yeah. And so yeah. then it becomes, in, in that sense, when it's an event, it's a checklist thing. Okay, I went to church this week or I did my church duty by even going beyond just Sundays and Wednesdays. Maybe it was a small group or a youth group event or whatever. And, and yeah. so it helps us get into that checklist mentality of, Okay, I, I do church part of the week, and then I do work, and I do school, and I do my hobbies and family time. 
No, your church all the time. Your church Absolutely. when you go to work. Your church in your home. Your church, you know, when just everywhere, you know, that's what being the church means. Just like you can't ever, you know, if you've got a family, say a family of, of five, six folks, you don't ever stop being family with each other. You know, it, just because one of you moves somewhere or one of you is not present, where you're still family. You consider yourself family. And you don't hear people say, okay, we, we got to go to family. Right. Or, uh, you know, I've already been to family this week. No, it's family is who you are. It's the essence of you. And it's, it's something that happens all the time. And so we've got to start thinking about our church family the same way. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately that's, that's what church is. Right. You read in Acts chapter 2, after they became Christians... It wasn't, you know, Peter said, preached that sermon. They said, well, what do we do? Repent and be baptized. And they baptize them and say, okay, we'll see you next Sunday. Yeah. You know, yeah. they immediately started <laughs> going together, eating together, studying together, praying together, you know, uh, worshiping together. All these things that the Christians did all throughout the week. And we say, well, I'm busy. I don't have time. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to, to gather with fellow Christians every day of the week. But every day of the week, we can do something as a part of the church, as a functioning member Absolutely. of the church. Yep. A member is another word that I think we've gotten wrong. We think of member as you're a member of the the health club, you're a member of Sam's club, you're a member of you know all these different organizations. When you're a member of the church, how does the Bible use that term? As a member of the body, you know, as uh, you say something got, somebody got dismembered, you know, they lost a finger or a hand. Right. Absolutely. Members of the body are that same thing, and so we're all vital to each other, as 1 Corinthians 12 talks about. Which kind of brings us up to our next point, and that is, is church a part of life or is church being life? You know, is it is it all-encompassing of everything you do or is it a part of what you do? Um, hopefully you've already kind of heard us express from together. This isn't something you just clock into. It's not a place you go to. This is the life that you live all the time. Mm -hmm. And and so being the church, and again, this particular issue, I think, is talking, it's really focusing in on church outside of the four walls of the building, which if you think about it, how much time in a given week do you spend outside those four walls? That's Mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And that's really when we've got to learn to rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, Mm -hmm. and put our Christian light out there. Right. And so we're going to do a a bit of a rundown. I think this podcast will be a little shorter than the last one, Um, but we still want to hit some of these points of what can't happen on Sunday? You know, on Sunday, that's why we have that conversation of how are you good? How are you good? And move on because we're just, we're there for that time and then you move on. And so the first thing that can't happen on Sunday is real relationships. Um, You know, as much as we can try and facilitate that and potlucks and other things, it takes going to each other's homes. It takes going and doing things together. It takes, I mean, you think about the people you're closest with. They are not people you see once a week in a situation where you're not getting to talk or anything right. else. You know, if you went to the movie theater every Friday night and you saw the same person there every Friday night and you even sat next to each other and then maybe even talked about the movie on your way out and then out to the parking lot and you saw them the next Friday night, you don't have a relationship with that person. Nope. And it's the same thing as if you come and sit and listen to the sermon and maybe talk with the people as you come and go. It's very hard to build the kind of relationships that we need. You know, Jesus said that it's our unity that's going to convince the world that he's real. It's our love for each other that people are going to see, oh, these these really are Christians. These really are different. And so that doesn't mean just getting along when we're in the building together. That really means being willing to die for each other. It really means, you see in Acts Absolutely. 2, I'm going to sell my house so you can live. I'm going to get rid of all my stuff. I'm going to take, you know, whatever it takes to take care of each other uh, is so much beyond that. Yeah, if you think about, for instance, being on jury duty, you know, you you having to serve, you may be with that group of people for a week, uh, maybe even all day for a week. But at the end of that week, if I were to ask you, you know, do you have a deep relationship with these people? The answer is going to be no, because the reality is you have been in a situation where it doesn't allow for intimate, con- you know, you, you can't talk about really deep things, uh, probably not sharing meals over important topics. All of your time is focused on the trial, Mm -hmm. uh, your breaks, what you're supposed to be doing in this trial. 
you know, for you to think that you can have these intimate conversations while you're getting ready to grab a songbook and, and it just, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Uh, what it takes are dining room tables. Uh, it takes living rooms where you actually feel comfortable enough to sit on someone's couch. Um, let, let's be honest. We aren't really good at bringing people into our homes the way we used to. And that's one of the challenges I want to put out there to everybody. And I hope that as you read this issue, you think about what are some ways that I can build relationships with my church family that's not happening today? You know, what's, what's one thing that I can do? Maybe I can call somebody and meet them for coffee. Maybe I can pick up somebody's kids, give them a date night, something to, to enhance a relationship with those people who you worship mm -hmm. with. You know, because Jesus, when Peter asked, hey, we've given up everything for you, you know, when when Jesus was saying that was what, what it would take, and Jesus said, yeah, you're going to get back a hundred times more, not just you get to go to heaven, but it's the family you're going to get, these mothers, brothers, sisters, farms, all these great things you're going to get is the church. And what he did not mean was people who are nice to you on Sunday. Exactly. You know, he means people who will die for you. And so that, uh, you know, it, it does take time. It does take some sacrifice, but it's such a blessing that you find out it's worth it. And just because somebody's picture's in the church directory doesn't mean that you really have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. um, we got to get past that. We got to get past all the, the barriers of everybody's okay. Because here's the reality. And I, Jack, I know you've seen this too. The reality is when you really get to know people, they have baggage. Mm -hmm. And Christianity is actually kind of messy. And, and I think Jesus expected us to get messy, to roll up our sleeves and to, to get invested in relationships where, you know what, somebody may have a spouse who is sick or somebody else may have children that are going through a tough time. And somebody else may have just gotten diagnosed with cancer. And, somebody, and so you got all of these families that, what really is happening is they're struggling with something on their own because they're afraid that everybody else is okay, that everybody else has got it all under control and they're fine. And so what are, what are they supposed to be? They're supposed to be fine. All right. Well, and that's, you're exactly right. I think that's one of the biggest things about this is the the building mentality of only seeing each other a couple times a week makes us really put on those masks, you yeah, know, of absolutely. I have to, to come to church showing I'm a perfect person. You can't do that when people are in your house and they see the mess and they see, you know, your kids fighting with each other or they see, you know, the, the struggles you're going through. And that's where we're, I mean, bear one another's burdens is a command. You look at all of those one another commands, love one another, bear one another's burdens, tolerate one another, yep. encourage one another, correct one another. You know, you can't do one another's on Sunday morning alone. And so that's why this idea of being the church between, between the Sundays and building these relationships is critical. So I'm going to take two minutes and, and embarrass Jack just a little bit. So Jack's parents have played a, a huge role in my wife and I's life in that we were exposed to them over a decade ago as they were homeschooling Jack and his siblings. We got to see what they were doing, see what they were doing right, see what they were doing wrong. And it allowed us to then have a blueprint for what we wanted to do with our children and because Brian and Deanne were willing to say, hey, here we are in all our glory, whether it's good, bad, our house is a mess, whatever, we want you, we want to welcome you into our lives and let you see it. We've now been able to share that same gift with other people who, who now can kind of go, okay, this is what it looks like. This is what works. This is what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's Jesus shared his life. He, he had people and just said, follow me, walk with me. I'm going to show you my day-to-day -day life, and then you go do the same, and that's exactly what they did. And so uh, it's key that we do that. Um, other things we got on our list of what can't happen on Sunday is really deep learning. I don't mean this uh, against preachers or teachers. I, I preach every Sunday. Uh, you know, there's only so much you can accomplish in a 20, 30, even 45-minute lesson, uh, and, and you can't customize it. You know, you can talk about grace, and somebody needs to hear that lesson about grace, but they need to find out how it's specifically in their lives. Or, you know, if they, they've they got a sin, we're up there saying, hey, you know, this battle with sin, you know, it, well, let's say pornography. That's one of the big issues in the church today. Yep. You know, you can tell somebody it's wrong. You can give all the reasons why it's wrong. And you can say, and if, if uh, to get over this, you need to confess it to somebody. You need to, to find somebody who will hold you accountable. 
Okay, but that doesn't do much for the guy in the pew. What does do that is drawing near enough to him to know, okay, this, these people love me. I can tell them about this. Right. You know, confessing yeah. our sins to one another is another one of those one another commands. And you think about, when's the last time I confess my sins to somebody? Because the uh, it, we do it so inoften. Is that a word? I don't know. We do it so infrequently. That's the word I'm looking for. That you would think, oh, we don't really have that many sins. We're 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 all struggling with something at one time or another. Yep. And you know what? We're not going to walk down in front of hundreds of people or however many people are at your church every Sunday morning and say, "All right, I struggled with this this week." Yep. That's why we need people in our lives that we're, we can confess to them, and they can confess to us. Whereas if you're sitting with a group of eight people who you know that they love you. They, tr- you know they, they're going to be there for you, and you start talking about something like uh, pornography or worldliness or whatever you know your your struggle is. Somebody opens up. It's a whole lot easier for other people then to open up and start saying, you know what, I I really that's that's a struggle for me. I want you guys to pray with me. You know, keep me accountable. Whatever. That's a whole lot more realistic mm-hmm. than. A guy who takes a topic like that tries to develop it in a 25-minute sermon, and you got 200 people who you know he's supposed to go down front, and he's not going to. Right, um, right. And so that kind of growth, our own personal holiness, is not an individual pursuit. You know, we are supposed to help each other. You know, you have that in Hebrews three of uh, encouraging one another day after day, because there is that deceitfulness of sin, uh, and so. You know, being church outside of the Sundays allows that to happen. On Sunday, just having somebody get up and say, we're not supposed to do this, and here's a few strategies for fighting that, it's in that relationship that that, that kind of growth against sin and, and growing more holy happens. Absolutely. Um, you think about the mission itself of, of evangelism. Yeah, we're supposed to do that between the Sundays of going out and reaching other people. That's another thing that's just easier in a group. Easier, you know, when you can invite somebody to, you know, hey, just come over and spend some time with us. Or, hey, we're having dinner with some friends. Come on over and and just introduce them to church people. Uh, That's a lot less threatening than, hey, come to my church on Sunday. And I've seen people respond a lot better to that than than other things. And And don't you think, Jack, this is what the original first century church looked a whole lot more like? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I think when you think about the first century church, you're thinking intimate relationships in a home setting, small groups where people are getting together, sharing their faith, struggles together, et cetera. And so, you know, somehow we've gone from that to, okay, let's go one or two hours a week to this building over here. Mm -hmm. And now we call that church. Right. I saw a few years ago somebody, I think it was a Catholic group, had came had come up with the idea of drive-through church. And literally people could drive up and they had the, the priests or whoever else it was out in the parking lot. And the people would come up and they'd have their little grape juice and cracker and they'd you know give them a little brief message and say a brief prayer with them. And within five minutes, you rolled on and the next person rolled up. And you think about how ridiculous that is, but I think to a certain extent... We've done something similar. Okay, come in on Sunday morning. We'll give you an hour. If you're really serious, stay for that second hour or come early for the Bible study. Roll on out. Okay, you've got your church in for the week. Uh, Because I think a lot of times people don't consciously ask this, but that implication is there of what all do I have to do to go to heaven? Okay, well, I have to go to church to go to heaven, so I'll be there. And Okay, I'm supposed to do maybe this, that, or the other thing, and I'm supposed to not do too many bad things, and so I'm going to try and do that, and as long as I keep that up, you know, that was not Jesus' call. You look at the the seriousness, and, you know, people, the rich young ruler was a fantastic rule follower. You know, he was a really moral guy and all that, and Jesus said... I'm sorry, you got to go home. You know the the other ones in Luke nine of go bury their let the dead bury their own dead. Let your family, you know, you got to turn turn them away. You know that commitment level is so much more than just Sunday morning, just you know this drive through church mentality. Absolutely. Uh, also, while we're talking about church outside the walls, and and you know Jack's now a new father. I've got four kids. It's very very important to have church family who your kids can grow up with and can have relationships with. Um, you know, one of our, our folks online talked about the fact that, you know, it's good to, to be able to have a place where you you know your kids are with other like-minded kids, have the same worldviews, and you realize, hey, you know what, though they're that's a wholesome relationship. They're going to grow together. They're going to help each other get to heaven. 
can always do those kinds of things just in the four walls of a church building. Right. And that's really the big idea is finding those people. When you get some of those people around and you realize this is what I need, this is this is great for, for my life, for my walk with Jesus and all that, then you want to invite other people into that and say, hey, you know, come on and join us. And some people aren't going to, but some people really will be up for that and say, that's exactly what I need in my life. And so that growth continues to happen. And those new people that come, you're trying to be a blessing to them. What do you usually find out? They're a blessing to you in Absolutely. return, you know? And so... Yeah. Um, Serving each other, studying with each other, confessing, uh, you know, all of these things we've talked about. But uh, the biggest challenge, and as we're kind of up over 20 minutes now, uh, let's let's get to kind of the practical aspect of it. First of all, we're all busy people. Where do you find the time? What, what I've learned is if you don't just consciously make the time, if you don't say, you know, what, we're going to do this. Uh, today we're going to do this. I'm, I'm going to put a reminder in my phone. If I don't do that, then it it can go weeks, months, years before we, quote, get around to doing something. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, and my wife will tell you, I'm, I'm a little bit more um, of a go-getter, brash, hey, if an idea comes up, let's just do it. Mm-hmm. Because if, if we all sit around, form committees, think about it, guess what? It's not going to get done. Right. So we want to have a, a Bible study on gratitude. Let's do it right now. Let's just, let's get her done. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we have people in our homes? We invite them. That's yeah, it. Just tonight, right. pick a phone, say, you know what? My house is a wreck. I got clothes, dogs, everything going on. Come on, join us. We'd love to have you. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, one of the, the really biggest things about it is not putting on these pretenses of our our house has to be perfect and it has to be oh, a five-course meal. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when you understand the benefit of, of this time together of being the church outside the walls is... If we're getting together to eat peanut butter and jellies, it's a blessing to us, you know, and and so whatever it takes to get there, if it's a potluck style meal, hey, you make your dinner and we'll make ours, bring it on over and let's talk together, you know, whatever it is. Let me me encourage you to take a look at how you spent your time the last seven days. You would be surprised at how much of your time was spent non-church activities. Um, you know, we all have things like maybe a commute to work or we have certain things that you can't really get around. But then there's a lot of our time where maybe we surf the web, maybe we watch TV, maybe we, we're we doing sport activities with the kids. All these different things that start eating up our time, which, by the way, Satan loves for you to have a really, really full calendar. Mm-hmm. What it takes is for you to say, you know what, we're going to scale back on some of this so that we can commit to being a church outside the four walls of the, mm-hmm. of the building. Yeah, I, I got an uh, app for my uh, web browser a few months ago that tracks how long I spend on social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, oh, whatever else. Goodness. That hurt. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> you get back to the end of the week, and it's like, oh, there's no way I spent that much time on there, but you do. And then your phone, you know, the especially if you're an iPhone user, it has that new update of how much screen time this week. It's embarrassing. It is. You know, you look at that and you realize how much time uh, social media takes up, how much time a phone takes up. Yep. You add in Netflix, you add in the football game, you add in, you know, all these different things. Well, guess what? We've got to eat anyway. You know, right. that's going to be part of our week. So have that, you know, and schedule that in or meet with somebody for coffee or, you know, just finding ways. Because I think one of the biggest principles out of all of this is Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. Yeah. And so as Christians walking in his footsteps, part of that is living our lives with this attitude of serving other people and reaching other people and being there for other people. Uh, and we just, that's something you can't do in an hour or two on Sunday. You've got to be willing to invest in people. That's, that's the bottom line is, um, I, lately I patterned, kind of patterned our lives after what I saw with Jesus. He took 12 people. He invested for three years deeply in those 12 people. If you really study his word, he actually took about three of them Mm. even more intensely and invested in them even more. Um, Why did he do that? You know, what was he just trying to be cliquish? Was he just trying to exclude others? No, he was pouring himself into these 12 people so that they would then pour themselves into more people and it starts to grow exponentially. And I think one of the things we've got to get back to is being willing to set our, our own desires aside and invest the time and energy into other people. Yeah, because that guards against one of the, the dangers of this is you can get into clickishness. 
you know, of I've got my, you know, small circle of friends and we're going to spend all of our time together and nobody else is invited in or, you know, just our entire Christian lives. But as you go on and you think, all right, this is about so we can grow stronger, so we can bring more people into this group. And yep. Yep. even if you've got to multiply into multiple, you know, home groups, because, you know, you get to the point of having 40 people in your house, not all that <laughs> practical, but, you know, you keep building those relationships and, and you have that idea of bringing more people and maybe bringing non-Christian outsiders in to try and introduce them into this and, yep. you know, see if we can appeal to them. And, you know, it just, it opens up opportunities. Again, there are all these one and others, all these commandments we're supposed to keep. And you really look at how they get handled in the church a lot of the time is, well, we're busy, so that's what we hire the preacher for. Love one another, encourage one another, yeah. take care of one another, bear one another's burdens. That's his job. I'm busy. I've got all these things with my kids, or I've got all these things going on in life. Well, if if life is that busy, again, see how much time you're spending on social media, on TV, on whatever else. Find areas during the week where you can say, you know what, this specific night is for my church family, is for something else. Is, and I wrote this in an article recently encouraging churches. If you're the kind of place that has programs that has people busy four, five, six you know, days a week, yeah, <laughs> slow down. And, and, and don't say, okay, now just go do whatever you want, but say... Okay, make sure you're taking time for family. Use some of this time more organically. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be a program because program programs can be a customer mindset thing of, okay, the church is putting on our time of fellowship. Yep, yep. And so... Yeah, I, I think sometimes congregations feel like, well, we're not, we're not successful or doing enough if we don't have this calendar 75% full. Mm-hmm. Well, the reality is, folks, if, if your church calendar is 75% full... That's not leaving a whole lot of time for your family to grow and for relationships outside of those four walls to grow. Mm-hmm. So, you know, think about that as as you're planning your your real church calendar. How much time are you giving families to unite, grow stronger together, as well as just members, like you said, organically doing things? Hey, bring whatever you're cooking tonight over. I we'll put our put it with ours and and let's play cards or let's sing by the fire, do whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, just opening up opportunities. And, and as you mentioned with Jesus' ministry, that scalability, we need to have these close-knit people because, again, we're not going to confess our sins or our struggles or whatever else with everybody. And so having that smaller group and then maybe a few more than that. And then, you know, of course, you've got your church-wide group and then church fellowships. Jesus handled people you know, and, and encouraged people and dealt with people on various levels. Absolutely. Being like Jesus, we should be doing the same thing. You know? Absolutely. All right, well, we're, you got one more Yeah, I was going to okay. say, I hope you guys look forward to the next issue of Think. Jack did a great job on it. Uh, looking forward to getting it into your hands very soon. Yeah, that'll be the November issue. Um, we're hoping to eventually uh, ramp up the podcast to two a month, but right now uh, we're just doing one per. And so uh, if you didn't get to catch all of this, look for well, our most recent episode we did last week on evangelism will be available here in the next week or so, uh, this one will be up sometime in the month of November. Um, subscribe. Uh, that Follow the link that we've put with this video here uh, if you're watching on Facebook Live. Uh, if you're not, focuspress.org slash think deeper. Uh, there's Google. Uh, if you're an Android user, there's a su- subscription link. iPhone, there's a subscription link. These will go up on YouTube. Uh, in fact, they already are. And so uh, you can find us all over the place. Absolutely. Um, if there's nothing else... Have a great week. Have uh, Make sure you have some time for church outside the four walls this week. All right, and we'll see you on the next episode of Think Deeper.